Hello my friends, in this tutorial we'll be animating a world of fireflies. I created this easy to follow tutorial for those of you who are just starting out with animation and looking to learn all about dreams too. In this tutorial you'll have fun animating using your stylus to direct the action instead of painstakingly drawing frames. We'll also learn how to add life to our projects using sound. In part one we created all of our assets in Procreate. If you want to jump into animating in Dreams 2, you can just grab the completed file using the link below. Or better yet, use the QR code to download it directly to your iPad. If you're struggling to download the file, just check out the link below. Let's open up Procreate and jump right in. So here is the project that I created with all of its important layers. If you ended up downloading my file, you'll also see it here in your gallery. Next, we're gonna go into Procreate Dreams and we're gonna hit the plus sign here. And the size that we're looking for is social and we're gonna choose empty. So we're gonna go into our settings and we're gonna make sure we're on project. And I'm gonna leave my frames per second at 24. I'm not planning to do any frame by frame animation, so that number is fine. And then for duration, I'm gonna set it to 10 seconds. Don't worry about the other settings here. We're gonna tap into timeline and we're gonna set it to loop. So to bring your artwork over, it's actually really easy. So I'm gonna grab my artwork like this and see how it's floating out. Well, now I can take my finger from the middle here, go into my apps and find Procreate Dreams. And then I'll go into that um, page that I made and then I can just drop it in. So the most important thing that you have to know when you bring things over from Procreate is here is the track and I'm gonna hold down on it and go convert drawing layers to tracks. This is gonna reveal all those layers that I created. So now it says group and there's a little arrow and you can open it up and you can see all of the pieces. Now, I just wanna remind you about some important navigation. So obviously two finger tap goes undo. And then if you do a three finger swipe, you can make your tracks larger and easier to see. So I'm gonna find my firefly and it should be pretty obvious. And when you tap on it, you'll see that red outline that lets you know what track you're on. And then if I tap on my screen here, I can make this firefly smarter, it's not smarter, smaller, and then move it around. And I want lots of fireflies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down on this track and go duplicate. So that's my second one. And if I move it around, you'll see that they kind of separate and I'll just make this one a little bit smaller. Now it's getting a little hard to move around here. So I'm gonna pull my finger down to make this bigger and then I can keep going like this. So I'm gonna duplicate and then move it around. So I want different sizes and different like starting spots. You can even have some of your fireflies off the screen. You can have things off the stage ready to go into the movie, which is something I really love about Procreate Dreams. So I'm gonna do like six fireflies, but you can do as many as you like. So now I'm gonna show you how to animate the fireflies and it's so easy with perform. So I'm gonna turn on perform here. And before we get started, I'm gonna hold down on the little finger there. Motion filtering kind of dampens the movements that you make. So we're just gonna set this one to zero. And if you have roll sensitivity, you can set that to 100. This will make the fireflies kind of jitter around really easily. So there's lots of different kinds of performance modes. So I'm gonna tap on this little circle here and I'm gonna to go to move and move in scale. And then the great thing about performance mode is now when I move my firefly like this, it's going to record those movements. So check this out, I didn't even finish, but if I go back to the start of my animation, I already have a pretty awesome animation. Now, a couple little things I wanna show you before you really get going. So one thing, if you look underneath the track here, you're gonna see these red symbols. This is actually the recording. These are the keyframes that have been recorded through performance mode. If you make a mistake, which you most surely will, you wanna do a two finger tap and just clear those. See how they all went away? And that means you can restart the animation. Another thing you should know is you can go off screen. We kind of already mentioned that, but it looks really nice with the animation. And you can always pause the animation by taking your pen off the page. And then when you do it again, it's just gonna restart where you left off. Because sometimes it can be really daunting to be able to do all of this in one go. And then just make sure you're reviewing your work because you're gonna learn a lot about how to make these fireflies fly in kind of like a fun and realistic way. So after each one, I would test it out. 
Now, sometimes you're going to want to know which firefly corresponds with which track. Um, so there's this little checkbox here, and you can turn it on and off, and you can see the correct firefly is kind of showing itself. So I'm going to start my next firefly here. So I'm going to go to the beginning and go to move, move and scale, and then I can make this one fly. And I really like how when you're performing with another object, you can see the first object kind of doing its thing. That way you can kind of coordinate them. Okay, so go ahead and animate all of your fireflies, and then we'll meet back here for the next part. So those are my fireflies animated. So I'm gonna pause the animation and I'm gonna look for the track that we labeled lantern. And one of the things we added to our lantern was that glow. So I'm gonna use a little arrow and open it up and you can see I have even more layers nested here. And I'm gonna go down at the bottom and find the glow layer. And I'm gonna show you a different type of performance mode. So I still have perform turned on, but this time I'm gonna tap on the little circle and I'm gonna choose filter and opacity. And when I move the slider back and forth, not only is it gonna make the glow flicker, but it's gonna record those movements. So maybe just watch my screen here. So I'm gonna kind of go back and forth. And I'm just doing kind of random movements until I get to the end. Okay, so let's test that out. And this is what the glowing effect looks like. And another thing I should mention about testing is that it will only play the portion that you're zoomed in on. So right now I'm really zoomed in. If I wanted to see the entire animation, I would have to zoom out on the timeline here. And a quick and easy way to do that is a big pinch like this. It'll zoom out automatically and show you from the very beginning to the end. So I'm gonna do a three finger swipe to make the tracks a little bit bigger. And then again, I'm looking for that group called lantern with the little arrow, and I'm actually gonna close this up. And having things grouped like this is really important for the animation. So in this case, we wanna make our lantern looks like, look like it's swaying back and forth. So I'm gonna to go to Compose. And before I get started, I'm gonna put my lantern in its starting position. So there's like a circle up here, and I don't want it to be like swaying too much. I made this mistake in my first couple of tries. So it's just gonna be leaning a little bit to the right like this. And then you wanna make sure the chain is attached right in the middle there at the top. And we wanna control this a little bit more. So I'm gonna use keyframes this time. So here's my action button. I'm gonna get as close to the beginning as I can. And I'm gonna go move, move and scale. And that's the type of keyframe I'm setting. Now I'm gonna to go to the end of my animation and also set a keyframe. And then we need one last one in the middle. So at five seconds, I'm gonna set a keyframe. So what this is doing is it's locking in the position of my lantern leaning to the right. And now I can sway it to the left. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna set bookmarks in between the ones that I have so far. So I'm gonna get as close to 2.5 as I can and set the bookmark. And this one needs an action, but there's a little secret to making things swing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find these th three little dots and we're gonna go to edit anchor. And you'll see this plus sign and you're gonna move this to the top of the chain. This is the anchor point is the point around which things move and rotate. And in this case, it's gonna be an important element. So we're gonna hit okay. And now you can swing it to the left, but what we wanna do is go to this little red circle. You sometimes have to tap on it and there's a gray handle and I'm gonna use that to swing it. Now these gray handles have been the bane of my students' existence. So if your lantern shrinks or gets bigger when you touch it, that happens to a lot of people. Just do a two finger tap to go back and then just try again. It'll just take you a couple of tries. So I've got this bookmark set and then I'm gonna do one last one at 7.5 seconds. So I'm gonna tap here and then again, I'm gonna swing my lantern to the left. So let's review and see what that looks like. So it's pretty cool, but there's something a little bit off about it. So I'm gonna introduce you to a concept called easing and it's a very hard setting to find. So right here in between my keyframes on the keyframe bar, I'm gonna find an empty spot and you're gonna see set all easing there. And there's lots of different kinds. I think for our lantern, ease in and ease out will look really nice. So again, I'm gonna zoom out and then let's see if that improved it. So what this does is it kind of slows the lantern down as it's moving to its left and right extremes. So the last animation that we're gonna do is for our grasses here. 
So I'm gonna find that track for me. It's layer 11, but I can kind of see the picture there. And I'm gonna just go back to compose. Before I get started, I'm gonna make my grasses a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna make sure there's lots of space here on the sides. The reason I wanna do this is because my grasses are gonna be kind of going back and forth, and I don't want there to be a separation. Okay, so now we're ready to try out Perform again, but this time we're gonna use Move and Warp, and I've always really loved Warp. It's just a really powerful way to move things. So I'm gonna start with the top circles. I'm gonna start with this one right here, and the trick is to be really gentle. So it's gonna let you sway your grasses back and forth. So this is how slowly I'm going. You'll probably have to re-record this one a few times until you get the gentleness. So I'm gonna move this little button here back to the start. When I tap on it, I just have to do warp one more time and then I can pick a different node. And I'm actually gonna do all four of those top circles and it really is recording the performance on top of itself. So you can do this as many times as you want. So let's take a look at what we created. And you can always check your work in full screen mode. You just have to tap four fingers on the screen here and then you'll find the back button right here. So one of the things I was most excited about with Procreate Dreams was adding sound to my animations. So the website that I like to use right now is called Pixabay, but that might change. So I'm just gonna link my current favorite down below. The reason I like this one is because it's completely free and you don't even need to add an email to use it. So first of all, you're gonna make sure you're on sound effects and then you're gonna kind of think of what you want. So in my case, I put insects. And I really like this one, it's called Insects at Night, and you can press the play button to preview it. I'm also gonna link the specific sound down below as a file. You can also use the QR code to download it to your iPad directly. But if you're picking out your own sound, you're gonna to wanna to press the download button and check out how easy this is. You just confirm the download and then go to this little circle with the arrow and you're gonna see the sound in there. And all we have to do is drag it. So I'm gonna open Procreate Dreams, and I like to drop my sounds here at the very bottom of my tracks, but technically it doesn't matter where you put them. And then I'm just gonna make sure that the sound effect starts at zero seconds. So I'm gonna pick it up and move it to the beginning. And this sound effect is more than long enough to reach the end of my animation, but it's kind of hiding. So I'm gonna grab the edge here and just expand it. So a check that I really like to do at the end of my animations is to make sure that all of my tracks make it to the end. Sometimes you'll see a gap like this, and this is gonna create a lot of problems in your animation. So just go ahead and double check that all the tracks go from the beginning to the very end of the animation. If you're looking to export and share your project, you can go to the settings here and go to share. And I think video is the one you want when you have sound effects. And you can use the save video option. Okay, great, so that is my completed animation. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you had fun and picked up a few new Procreate Dreams tricks along the way. If you'd like to share your finished artwork with me, you can find my social media link below. I post new tutorials every week, so if you enjoyed this one, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next great project I've got cooking. Adios!